All right, so my, my first talk is about uh, Pinsko inequalities and more specifically the role of uh, Marcel Paul Schutzenberger for Pinsko inequalities. It's about, it's like a historical talk at some point and also like an overview of uh, what is called, uh, it is very well known as Pinsko inequalities. All right, so, so the basic question that I will be dealing with is uh, how far is one distribution to another? So we have many, many possible answers. Either people are, are preferring like distances, defining a metric, or uh, divergences. Uh, we have many, many types of divergences, many types of distances. And uh, for this talk, I will be only focusing on uh, the most basic uh, quantities, which are uh, total variation or statistical distance, delta, and Kullback-Leiber divergence uh, D of PQ also known as relative entropy. So these are the definitions. Uh, these definitions include the discrete and the continuous case depending on the choice of the dominating measure. Um, and uh, so it is well known that like, for example, delta lies between zero and one total variation because of the one half factor and uh, equals uh, all quantities equals zero if and only if the two distribution coincide. Uh, however, delta is a distance, hopefully it's uh, related to the L1 uh, distance, uh, but uh, D is not. Uh, delta is one if and only if the two distributions have non-overlapping supports, and in this case the direction goes to plus infinity, so it's unbounded. In a binary case, you have some uh, like simple expressions. Uh, for Bernoulli, Bernoulli distribution, delta is just the difference between the two parameters. Uh, there are so also some alternate definitions which are uh, really interesting. Um, when you consider a supremum taken over all possible partitions over the, the entire space, and so you can define delta as being uh, what is classically known in mathematics as the total variation of the, uh, the sign measure P minus Q. And uh, similarly, uh, divergence can also be expressed as the similar expression. Uh, and so there, there, there has been a lot of work, um, very old work in the 1950s and 1960s about these quantities and especially we know that it's enough to consider intervals when the omega is, is typically r. And uh, this is Dobrosin's theorem for, for divergence. Uh, it's also very uh, easy to check that it increases by sub-partitioning uh, and, and therefore the, the supremum is actually a limit for finer and finer partitions. And uh, we get uh, the, um, the, the, the well-known formula. Uh, for delta, it's already known for a binary partition, which I call the binary reduction property, which will be useful in the sequel. And uh, for D, it's the content of the gelf and yal glom Perez theorem back in 1959. So all this is supposedly well-known. And uh, so uh, we have the two nice properties about delta, one for delta and one for D. Uh, for delta, we have this binary reduction property that I mentioned. That is, uh, uh, delta is already attained for binary partitions, and therefore we have this simple formula here. Let me see if the laser is working. This one, okay. Uh, which implies that uh, if delta is sufficiently small, then uh, there is no statistical test that can uh, be used to effectively distinguish between the two distributions. So it's uh, that's why the total variation uh, distance is probably the most uh, used in, in many areas, for example, in computer science. However, uh, for kullback leiber divergence, we have another very nice property, which delta doesn't have. Uh, it, it, it nicely tensorizes for, pro uh, for products of probability measures. And that is very especially interesting when you, uh, I will give an application. Uh, so, summary of properties, okay, on one hand you have a metric, on the other not a metric, on one hand you have a bounded uh, distance with binary uh, reduction, which you don't have on the other, but on the other hand you have nice tensorization. Uh, okay, so uh, the, 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 the Pinsky inequality is about trying to connect the two and uh, ask the question which topology is finer. Um, uh, and Pinsky inequality would take this following uh, form. Uh, it's a lower bound on divergence as a function of uh, the total variation distance, okay? Uh, where phi is typically increasing and convex like in the figure. 
And uh, so uh, this means that if, if the divergence is small, then delta will also be small. And therefore, the uh, kind of topology defined by divergence is finer than the one de defined by total variation, which was the basic classical result of Pinsker. And uh, also, uh, using binary reduction, uh, it is very easy to see that it is enough to prove Pinsker inequality uh, in the binary case because delta can also uh, can already be defined for binary partitions and d can only only increase by subpartitioning and therefore uh, to prove in a binary case is simply is simply a, a very simple expression i will give that later first let me just uh, give a very uh, uh, very small uh, example why is pinsker inequality useful uh, suppose, for example, that I have two uh, coins, one is fair and one is bent, <laughs> like unfair coin. And I would like to uh, make the distinction between those two uh, by doing entosis. You are not allowed, of course, to, uh, to, to, to look at the coins, but you are only allowed to look at the results of the entosis. And uh, for that, to be sure with probability 1 minus epsilon, you need that delta between the product of the distributions is at least uh, 1 minus 2 epsilon. Right. The problem is there is that delta does not tensorize for the product of this distribution. However, however, uh, divergence does tensorize, so we have to make the connection with, uh, between the two, and that uh, that's a, a content of Pinsker inequality. So by Pinsker inequality, uh, you you easily get a, 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 a computable bound on the uh, the minimum number of tosses to actually be able to distinguish with some probability one minus epsilon. So that uh, so you have many many other examples in the literature and computer science, uh, which explains why Pinsker inequality is so uh, so useful. All right. So to su to summarize, uh, find the best Pinsker inequality is find the best function phi, so that this inequality holds for 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 any parameters p and q between zero and one. Which seems like a very simple exercise, but it's not right. So I will just make a historical review of this. So the classical Pinsker inequality takes this form, uh, d uh, not less than c times the squared of delta, with some constant c, which the, the best constants being uh, c equals 2, that we know already. And uh, this comes from uh, Pinsker, <laughs> Pinsker inequality. But in Pinsker's book, as you can see uh, in Russian, uh, it, it took this uh, special form. As a matter of fact, uh, I found that uh, Pinsker did not explicitly state Pinsker inequality, uh, but not even in uh, the general form. Instead, he proved two different inequalities, very involved proofs, and uh, com which combine give this inequality. And now, doing some math, it can be shown that it indeed gives a classical Pinsker inequality, but with a very suboptimal constant instead of the optimal two. Right, so what happened then? Well, the first uh, publication of an explicit occurrence of a Pinsker inequality was made even before Pinsker's book, uh, but referring to Pinsker, by Volinsky and Rosanov, which proved this, which is suboptimal, but still it's the first occurrence of Pinsker inequality. Then later in 1964, the first occurrence of the classical formulation of Pinsker inequality was in a book by a Japanese researcher, Sakaguchi. But unfortunately, uh, this book was never published. So the first published occurrence <laughs> of a Pinsker inequality of the classical form was by McCain, 1966, with suboptimal constant. And finally, uh, Caesar mentioned the uh, classical inequality with the optimal constant, but without proof. And it's only in 1967, one year later, that he actually proved this in a publication. And uh, this can be uh, written as a one-line proof using first-order Taylor expansions, like shown here. All right. However, the, the story is not over. Okay. Uh, f first, Kemperman, 1968, apparently derived uh, an independently the same inequality. But also, Caesar mentions uh, earlier independent derivation of Kullback, 1967, which is even better because it includes a second order term in delta 4. All right? 
However, the constant of the second order term uh, appeared to be wrong, and this was discovered by Vajda in 1970 and had to be replaced by the optimal constant 4 over 9 instead of 4 over 3. So what happened? Actually, what happened was that uh, Kubak uh, copied an earlier derivation in a French uh, thesis written in 1953 by this guy, Marcel Paul Schützenberger, which I would like to talk about a little bit because uh, he's a very uh, interesting uh, character. Okay. Uh, so Marco Schützenberger uh, was actually from an Alsatian family, so his grand-grand-grand-grandfather was a mayor in Strasbourg. Strasbourg is my hometown. And he's well known for a, uh, a beer, uh, uh, well known in, in, in Alsace, Schützenberger beer, which comes from the same family. Then his grand-grandfather is also well known, Paul Schützenberger. Uh, he's a renowned chemist, which worked with Pierre and Marie Curie and is well known to be the character of Les Palmes de Monsieur Schutz, uh, which was a theater play and a, a, a movie after that. Uh, for, so Marcel Paul, uh, during World War II, he, uh, he, he was interned in a psychiatric hospital. He was active in resistance activities where he worked for the intelligence service. And he also published his first mathematical paper in 1943 on a group theory. And then, just after World War II, he uh, known to participate in some uh, Dadaist movements with Boris Vian. Uh, and, uh, he, he was also the main character in a, a well-known novel of Boris Vian, which is a, a well-known writer, French writer, as M Dr. Marcus Schutz, huh, Schutzenberger. And he was also a member of a, uh, of, of a, a communist minister, Charles Tillon. He published articles in lattice theory and in physiology while studying some exotic language. Uh, and he defended his, his doctoral thesis, so uh, a medical thesis, on uh, the contribution to the study of sex at birth, which was awarded by the French Academy of Medicine. So he was a medicist. He also applied statistical methods to the analysis of various mathematical problems. He's uh, one of the uh, contributors to the discovery of Trisomy 21. Uh, and in 1948, uh, based on his statistic, uh, a psychologist, a well-known psychologist, Anne Ansley, was uh, uh, giving a presentation. And from that statistic, he was offered a position in London. And then he went to London and he said he would be better paid if he were married. And therefore, he got married immediately in London with Anne Ansley. And this is actually a photo of their marriage. Okay. And finally, he declined the position and the couple divorced one year later. Uh, he was still publishing papers on combinatorics, on biostatistics with Georges Darmois. Uh, he was also a con uh, consultant of the World Health Organization, which sent him to Asia uh, to combat to infectious disease in tropical countries, in particular Indonesia, where he met his second wife. So, uh, so many things happening for this guy, right? Uh, and it's not over. In 1952, uh, he came to uh, information theory, published his first paper on information theory, uh, from biostatistics, and he defended his uh, mathematical thesis uh, advised by Darmois and uh, uh, with the President Frechet on a contribution in, uh, of uh, the statistical application of information theory. And from this uh, thesis, he was invited by Claude Shannon at MIT, which he spent the year 1956-1957 there. And uh, so he did many, many other things like uh, invariable length code, he's known for automata theory, he's known for the clean Schutzenberger theorem, and for so many things, all right. All right. Very interesting character. Now coming back to his thesis, this was what his thesis contained. It actually contained Pinsko inequality with first and second order, and that was seven years before Pinsko. So, and, and this is the, so uh, D was for him was the difference between P and Q, so it's actually our delta, and W was the Wald information, as uh, he called it, which uh, for now is uh, the uh, divergence, Kulbach hybrid divergence. So he actually published this seven years before Pinsker. And uh, so what happened with the constant 3 over 4 and 3 over 9? Well, uh, uh, I investigated this in detail. And uh, I found that most likely in 1953, 
uh, the original French manuscript was in error, it had the wrong constant. And then uh, there was Cambo and Cotts who published a paper by copying a Schutzenberg derivation uh, verbatim, but without mentioning the original reference and without correcting the error, of course. And finally, Kohlbach also uh, mentioned Schutzenberg's word, but uh, with the wrong constant. And finally, Kraft discovered that the constant was wrong and corrected to 4 over 9. And, uh, and so Vajda was the one who uh, pointed uh, that the constant was wrong in Kulbuk's uh, paper. And uh, so he said that Kraft corrected an inequality of Schutzenberg on which Kulbach's result was based. And uh, this was acknowledged by Kulbach in the same year. And then later, Schutzenberger apparently corrected his uh, uh, manuscript uh, by hand uh, from a 3 to a 9, because uh, this is the 9 that appears in his thesis, and actually the 3 should meet, uh, I I has this form, and he apparently corrected by hand with a, with a pencil. Okay. All right, so this is the story about the wrong constant, but still, uh, Schutzenberg derivation is, is correct and gives the, f the, the optimal first and second order uh, terms of mean square inequality and even more than that. Uh, Kraft uh, and Schmitz used in Schutzenberg identity to derive the third order constant, which was 2 over 9, which was converted to a mean square inequality by two sum. And uh, much uh, recently, uh, Topso find that the best optimal constant in uh, order th uh, 3 was uh, 32 over 135, and uh, and even the third order constant, and all this uh, used uh, Schutzenberger in identity. So uh, the, the thesis, the 1953 thesis of Schutzenberger. Okay. Now what happened next? Well, there was some more recent improvement of Pinsker inequality, uh, which were needed because uh, the classical Pinsker inequality becomes vacuous as soon as d gets large. Uh, the reason for this is that when uh, delta approaches one. Uh, then d should necessarily go to in plus infinity. And therefore, uh, we should, uh, if we have a good Pinsker inequality, we should also have this uh, situation. Which it should also reflect that property. And so the first uh, uh, inequality of this type that was derived by Vajda uh, actually has this property, okay, because of the 1 minus delta in the numerator. Then Britanniol and Hubert in 1978 had a simpler but weaker inequality, which is well known in, in statistics, and uh, which appears in, in, in Sibakov's classic book, uh, however, uh, even a weaker uh, version. And finally, the best known inequality of this type was derived recently by Gilardoni. And uh, if you want to have a simple proof of this, you can look at my paper. But now the story is not over yet, but because we have the optimal. However, the optimal was derived in an implicit form and not explicit. Uh, so a uh, parameterized form. So this was derived by Fedorov, Faramos, and Topso by Lenschel uh, tra uh, Fenchel transformation and with hyperbolic trigonometric function. So I have, I have found a simplified uh, proof and a simplified uh, formula for this implicit uh, form of optimal Pinsker inequality. That you cannot beat, it's actually the correct function, which doesn't appear to appear in explicit form. So if, if you want to have a simple proof of this, you can uh, still have a look at my paper. And uh, so to summarize, that's about all the Pinsker inequalities we know about. Uh, this was Bretagne Hubert, this is Vajda, this is Gilles Denis, this is Pinsker, and this is Schutzenberger, which I talked to you about. If you have uh, any other question, if you'd like to, to, to break the record, you just have to find the best explicit uh, function phi, which uh, satisfies this inequality. So it's up to you now. Thank you. <laughs> if you have any question or comment, if you don't, then we get, yeah, please. Is there such a rich history for the multivariate case beyond binary? Oh, it's uh. So uh, that works for any, any case. Uh, by binary reduction, it can, you can always restrict to the binary uh, partition. So it's, it's, it doesn't uh, entail any lack of generality. Yeah. So, and, and in fact, Schutzenberger did it in the binary case only. But it, as, we, as we saw, this is not a restriction, in fact. 
for this case. And probably all this could be easily generalized, uh, or more or less easily generalized to other types of dimensions, other types of distances, uh, and other types of Pinsker inequality that we can derive this way as well. Any other comment? <laughs>